Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly Stevens. I'm a teacher and author, and this is English Nerd. So I have been fascinated with the idea of narrators for a long time, like narrative voice. Can you trust them? Can you not? Um, and I intentionally made my narrator in Laertes the Hamlet retelling an unreliable narrator. Can you trust everything that he experiences? Maybe, but that's sort of the question you need to tease out based on the evidence in the story. Um, so there are several reasons why I did that. and. One of them is just that I find unreliable narrators so compelling because it makes the reader have to kind of meet the story halfway to determine if they can what the truth is of the matter. So I have compiled a set of some of the most interesting unreliable narrators, in my opinion, among the classics. So yeah, without further ado, here are some of the most interesting, unreliable narrators um, in classics. So very first uh, one is Flowers for Algernon um, by Daniel Keyes. Charlie is a developmentally challenged adult who undergoes a procedure to make him more intelligent. So that's kind of the premise of the whole thing. So he's unreliable, not because he's an untrustworthy kind of person, which is usually the case with unreliable narrators, um, but because he doesn't fully grasp, especially at the beginning, what the truth of his situation is. Like there is somebody that he works with, for example, that he says is his best friend, but you can tell through the ways that he's describing this friend that he that the person is really not a good person. He doesn't care about Charlie. And so we need to figure out what is actually true because he, Charlie, is unreliable. Um, so yeah, heartbreaking book if you want to, you know, have your heart ripped out and stomped upon. There you go. Um, number two, I don't actually have a physical copy of this, unfortunately, but The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman is an absolute master class in unreliable narration. Um, the main character is somebody who slowly loses her mind over the course of the story. And so it's kind of up to you whether you, you know, where does that begin? Did she start out that way? The whole thing is written in diary form and it's, it's quite short. It's like 20 pages long. So kind of a mid to long short story is, is what it is. Um, I'm not including most most of these are novels, um, but I do have a couple of short stories in, in this list. So yeah, The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Number three is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Uh, again, a famously unreliable narrator. We have a strong teenage first person voice, somebody who is cynical, who thinks everybody else is phony, and we have to kind of figure out what the truth of Holden Caulfield's situation is and, and to what degree does he fall into those categories that he accuses other people of and what is it that he really wants because he doesn't come out with it um, all the time. So yeah, Catcher in the Rye, J.D. Salinger is obviously one of, one of the most famous American classics and that one is another unreliable narrator for for a few different reasons. Um, Holden is just not not as, I don't know, self-aware or, um, you know, able to articulate his situation in a nice, clear, straightforward, objective way. Um, so <clears throat> then next up we have Notes from Underground by Fedor Dostoevsky. This is one of Dostoevsky's shortest works. So if you've been looking to get into reading classics this year, um, and you like philosophy, you have to like philosophy, um, then I would definitely recommend Notes from Underground. The Underground Man, who is never named, is unreliable. He's incredibly spiteful, incredibly in his head. And at first, he seems like somebody that you can believe, even if you don't agree with some of his, his ramblings in the first half of this. It's split up into um, sort of a, a diary style set of, of ramblings against the idea of the possibility of utopias. And then the second half is uh, 
an explanation of his life, a small section of his life, and how those ideas actually play out in reality. And you realize just how, how horrible he is. So yeah, fantastic, unreliable narrator. Um, the first line, I am a sick man, I am a wicked man. Just unparalleled first line there. Um, next we have The Life of Pi by Ian Martell. Um, and that one, it seems like you have somebody that you can trust, but then the ending really undermines a lot of what you thought you could believe about this survival story, um, about this, this kid in the ocean with these, these dangerous animals, how he makes it through to actually surviving. It calls everything retroactively into question. At first, it seems like you can trust you can trust the narrator, but it's just a fantastical situation. It's like a magical realism kind of thing. Um, but then you're really not sure if this is much deeper and more sinister by the time you get to the end. So I'm not going to get all into that because, you know, I don't like spoilers, but uh, Life of Pi by Jan Martel is another one. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Henry James, The Turn of the Screw. The governess in The Turn of the Screw is someone who initially appears relatively reliable, somebody who can just objectively state the facts of her situation. However, as the first person narration goes on, and there are red flags early as well, we're not sure if she actually sees a ghost, like she knows that there's ghost activity going on in this uh, manner where she's watching these children or if she is inventing all of it in her mind and unintentionally putting these children in danger so it's a pretty it's a pretty sinister um, story to be honest because you have to determine which which of those is right is she correct or is she paranoid or has she disconnected from reality entirely and we can't tell because we're in her head the entire time so yeah the turn of the screw definitely the first one one of the first ones that comes to mind probably this and then the yellow wallpaper when i think of unreliable narrators okay the next one is not on most people's lists um and that is don juan by lord byron it's a manuscript length it's really long it's a long poem about Don Juan, the famous kind of lover, which is <laughs> such a generous term <laughs> for what Don Juan is. He just, he seduces various women, you know, he climbs over nunnery walls and whatever. So it's him and how he grew up, grew up to become this sort of Byronic character, um, who's actually quite a lot like, like the poet Don, uh, the poet, um, Lord Byron. Anyway, the narrator who's telling the story of Don Juan, it's not from Don Juan's perspective, it's from this narrator's perspective. He is interesting because it he is somebody that you don't you don't know as a character beyond being a narrator, if that makes sense. Um, however, the narrator has very strong opinions about what's going on and will sometimes be sarcastic or sassy or say, for instance, that Don Juan's mother is very learned. She knows the the paternoster, you know, the Our Father who art in heaven in Latin. She can count to 10 in other languages. So the evidence that he gives is like, no, she's not actually that learned. She just knows a couple of random things. Um, so anyway, he, that narrator is is I guess there's a reason that that narrator doesn't fall on a lot of lists but I think the narrator of Don Juan deserves to be on some of those lists because he's always making these snide comments about how Don Juan really shouldn't have put himself in that situation but oh my goodness look at her eyes and it's this weird hypocritical fascinating narrator character who just tells the story but in a very biased kind of way. So yeah, that it's it's a very easy to read kind of poem. It reads like prose. Um, Byron is is good at, at what he does. 
And then finally, we have very famously Edgar Allan Poe's short stories. I'm going to highlight The Telltale Heart because that is his most famous example of an unreliable narrator. The Telltale Heart is about a guy, if you don't already know the story, who sees a man whose eye bothers him. He, he feels, I mean, that's, a, that's an understatement. He feels almost assaulted by this evil eye of this old man and so he goes and and murders him um, however the entire time the first person narrator is trying to convince you that he is not mad and it's the protesting and the kind of proof he provides and things like that that make you say no actually I completely don't believe you <laughs> I think you are you are actually uh, you are actually insane and and uh, you've you've murdered this man for for no good reason at all. So yeah, if you've been interested in unreliable narrators, there is a place to start. Lots of different options for you. Um, and again, Laertes a Hamlet retelling is out there in all formats and all places. Make sure to like this video if you like it. Let me know, are there any other classic lists or um, recommendations that, that you would like from me? Please tell me down in the comment box below. Get those notifications for new English nerd videos and I'll see you next time.